Bullying is one of those things that every teacher is seeking an answer for. But the bullying of LGBTQ plus students poses a unique problem because it means addressing harassment to an entire marginalized group. The harm in these cases is not just between the bully and the one being bullied. It's a whole societal system. One where heteronormativity, the idea that heterosexuality is the normal or preferred way to be, and cisnormativity, the assumption that a person's gender expression matches the gender they were assigned at birth, sets the worldview. Heteronormativity and cisnormativity are both all about making assumptions about others, and can both get in the way of an inclusive society. My name is Patty Zempke, and I am a sixth grade health teacher at the middle schools for the Wassa School District. Patty has been doing LGBTQ plus advocacy in the Wassa School District for 10 years. She says these days one of the reasons bullying is so difficult to stop is because it's not always something that happens in front of you. Most of the bullying has happened over the phone or, you know, whatever social media, and then the feelings come to school and maybe things continue a little bit. But when you do see it, it's something to address in that exact moment. Let's say a student were to yell out, oh, you're so gay, or that answer is so gay. How do you respond to that? So we kind of sat all in a circle and, and talked about why it wasn't appropriate and why they might be hurting someone else's feelings. If students come to school having already been bullied, they're not coming to a neutral space. They're coming to a space where they may not feel protected. But this is exactly the environment where a teacher can do small things to support big systemic change. So just using gender neutral language and, and posters, you know, everyone is welcome here, or you are safe here, um, things like that can, can help students feel more welcomed in the classroom. And, and when, you, when uh, teachers have to split students up for different groups, how about if you have purple shoelaces? You go, you know, right here. And if you have white shoelaces over here, just keeping the whole gender thing out of every topic is welcoming. Dropping assumptions and removing gendered language is one small way to have a big impact on school culture. And if you're unsure on what language to use, just ask your students. The students know more than we do. The students, what I found, are more okay with LGBTQ than the adults. So ask the students, what do they prefer? After you've made global adjustments like using gender neutral language, you can always continue to establish personal relationships because authentic connections undermine any assumptions that come with heteronormativity and cisnormativity. Well, one thing that I like to do is every student, I don't care how old they are, loves a brown paper bag that's just in the front of the room and they can't see what's in the bag, but they know that it has to do something with what they're gonna do that day. And in my brown paper bag, I have a ton of weird objects, like a card, a puzzle piece, a pair of glasses, a volleyball knee pad. So I have probably 35 different objects in this brown paper bag, and I literally throw them all around the room and tell the students that they need to pick one of those objects to help explain who they are or what they like or or something like that. So that very first day, just making a connection and letting them tell everyone else what they are, what they're about. Or you could do it by just spending time checking in every day. I start every day with just talking to my students, five to 10 minutes, and it may go longer. If a student is having a problem or an issue, then then we might need to talk about it longer, but talking to them through different scenarios and teaching them empathy is really, really, really important. Talking to your students about their lives may give you insight into what's happening around them, both positive and in the case of LGBTQ bullying, the negative. If I didn't take the five to 10 minutes to just talk with my class, let them arrive, let my students arrive, I would not know half the things that I do that are going on in their lives. And that's why it's so important to do that. With the mental health, the mental well-being of our students being at a crisis, it, you don't have to get into the classroom and start your bell work with math problems right away. Can't you do something else? <laughs> Can't you connect the students to one another in a different way? What are some things you could do to create a supportive environment for your students? 